Hello, dear learners. Welcome to EDU Access. Today we're going to learn an important concept called grouping objects and materials. Have you ever wondered why shopkeepers keep rice in one place and sugar in another? Well, that's because grouping makes life much simpler. And in today's lesson, we're going to discover exactly how and why. In this lesson, we'll talk about what grouping is all about. Next, we'll explore why grouping is so important in our daily lives. Then we yellow conduct fun activities and simple experiments to learn how to group objects based on their properties. So let's dive right in and get started. So let's start by defining what grouping actually means. You see, grouping simply means putting things into groups based on what they have in common. For instance, <laughs> in your school bag, you keep your books in one spot, pencils in another, and your lunchbox somewhere else. Why do you do that? Well, it's because grouping things makes it easier to find them. If everyone kept their pencils in the same place, you wouldn't need to rummage through your entire bag to find them. But there's even more to grouping than just convenience. Take a look at your classroom. Notice how the teacher has arranged all your desks in rows and columns. Do you know why? It is so that everyone can sit in an orderly fashion and also so that students who want to work in groups can idly find each other. Grouping objects makes everything more organized. It also helps us study things in a better way. You know, when we arrange things according to their characteristics, we can easily compare and learn about them. For example, if we put all the round objects together, we can notice that they share something in common. We can then ask questions like, what are all these things? What do they have in common? Are they similar or different? This way, grouping helps us to observe things closely and understand them better. We can group objects in many ways, such as by their size, shape, color, weight, texture, or material. But sometimes grouping can be a little confusing, especially if we don't know how to do it properly. That's why we have to carefully think about the properties of the objects before grouping them. Let's take a look at these two balls. They both look alike, but if we pay attention, we'll notice that one is made of rubber and the other is made of metal. Although they look similar, we cannot group them together because they are made of different materials. Similarly, we cannot group a book and a pencil together because they are made up of different materials. Now let's consider this piece of wood and this steel rod. They both look very different. But if we look closely, we'll notice that they are both hard. Based on this property, we can group them together, even though they look different. So we have to be careful when grouping things. We cannot just do it randomly. Instead, we have to think about what we want to group things by. If we want to group things by their appearance, we can make two groups, shiny or non- For instance, we can place this steel spoon and this wooden block in two different groups based on their appearance. Similarly, if we want to group things by their material, we can make groups like plastic, wood, metal, ETC. And if we want to group things by their size, we can make groups like big, medium, and small. Now, let's play a game. Look at these objects. A glass tumbler, a wooden block, a steel spoon, a rubber ball, a cotton cloth, and a plastic bottle. How would you group them? Well, you can group them however you like. Let's pause the video here and you can try grouping them in your own way. Pause the video here and give the students some time to think about how they would group the objects. After a few seconds, resume the video. Did you manage to group them? You could have grouped them in many ways such as by size, shape, material, or even color. For example, you could have made a group of small items and another group of big items. Or you could have made a group of round objects and another group of irregular shaped objects. Maybe you grouped the objects by color or material. Well, whatever way you chose, that's fine. The important thing is that you thought about the properties of the objects and how they are alike or different. That's why grouping things is so important in science. It helps us to see the similarities and differences between objects and understand them better. We can group things based on their properties, which are the characteristics that describe the object. Some properties that we can use to group things include shape, color, size, weight, texture, and material. For example, let's look at these four different materials. A wooden block, a glass sheet, a metal spoon, and a cotton cloth. 
We can group them based on their properties. First, let's look at their shape. The wooden block is rectangular in shape, while the metal spoon is a fork shape. The glass sheet is also rectangular, but it's thin and flat. And finally, the cotton cloth has no definite shape. So based on the shape, we can make two groups. One for regular shaped objects, and the other for irregularly shaped objects. Next, let's look at their color. The wooden block is brown. The glass sheet is transparent. The metal spoon is silver. And the cotton cloth is white. So based on their color, we can make two groups. One for colored objects, and the other for non-colored objects. Let's move on to their size. The wooden block is quite large, while the glass sheet is thin and small. The metal spoon is also small, but it's thicker than the glass sheet. And the cotton cloth is very soft and flexible. So based on their size, we can make two groups. One for bigger objects, and the other for smaller objects. Now let's look at their texture. The wooden block is rough and hard, while the metal spoon is smooth and shiny. The glass sheet is smooth and slippery, and the cotton cloth is soft and fluffy. So based on their texture, we can make two groups. One for rough objects, and the other for smooth objects. Finally, let's consider their material. The wooden block is made of wood. The glass sheet is made of glass. The metal spoon is made of metal, and the cotton cloth is made of cotton. So based on their material, we can make four separate groups. One for wooden objects, another for glass objects, a third for metal objects, and a fourth for cotton objects. As you can see, there are many different ways to group objects based on their properties. Sometimes we can group objects based on one property, while other times we can group them based on multiple properties. And now it's time to try some fun experiments to check the properties of different materials. Get ready to learn even more about grouping objects. Alright, grab a wooden block and a hammer. Now hit the wooden block gently. Did you notice anything? The wooden block did not break. Now hit the cotton ball gently with the same force. Observe what happens. The cotton ball falls apart. That's because the wooden block is hard, while the cotton ball is soft. We can use this property to group materials together. For example, we can group hard materials like wood and stone in one group, and soft materials like cotton and cloth in another group. Now let's check the transparency of different materials. Take a glass sheet, a butter paper, and a cardboard and place them one by one in front of a light source. Observe what happens. The light passes through the glass sheet, but it does not pass through the cardboard. When light passes through an object, we call it transparent. We can use this property to group materials. For example... We can group transparent materials like glass and water in one group, and opaque materials like cardboard and cloth in another group. Now let's check the luster of different materials. Take a steel spoon and a wooden stick and place them in a bright area. Observe what happens. The steel spoon looks shiny and lustrous, while the wooden stick appears dull. This property helps us to group materials. For example, we can group lustrous materials like metals and plastic in one group, and non-lustrous materials like wood and cloth in another group. As you have seen, grouping objects based on their properties helps us to understand them better. We can group materials in many different ways based on their characteristics. By understanding the properties of materials, we can use them more effectively in our daily lives. Have you ever wondered how shopkeepers keep all the different types of items in an organized manner in their stores? They do this by grouping similar items together. For example, they keep all the toys in one area, books in another, and clothes in another place. This makes it easier for customers to find what they want. Similarly, in a warehouse, workers keep heavy items like boxers and machines in one area, and lighter items like tools and equipment in another area. This keeps the workplace neat and tidy. We can also group items in our own lives to make things easier. For example, we can keep our toys in a toy box, our books on a shelf, and our clothes in a wardrobe. Grouping items makes it easier to find what we need and keeps our things organized. It's important to remember that when we group items, we should look carefully at their properties and group them based on what they have in common. Now, let's test your knowledge with a quick quiz. What kind of material is water? Is it opaque, transparent, or translucent? Comment 
below. We hope you enjoyed learning about grouping objects and materials. Remember, grouping is a simple way to organize things based on their properties. It helps us to understand things better and make our lives easier. Keep observing and grouping things in your daily life. You never know what you might discover. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something new and interesting. Do you and forget to subscribe for more videos and leave a comment below to let us know what you think. See you next time.